nitric acid as common acid. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to take your iPads out, open EduCreations, and I want everyone to draw an animal cell with labels. Let's go. Okay guys, let's see how you've done. Um, Jimmy, could you send your image to the screen over the air server please? Let's see how you've done. All right, excellent. Okay, cell membrane, good job. Cytoplasm and the nucleus. Okay guys, can we all open our textbooks? Page 14, please. Okay, and I would like you to zoom in and have a look at this cell. Now this cell is called a root hair cell. Okay, I would now like you to open up Quizlet in Safari and we're going to do a 20 question test on the current unit. As soon as you got I just wanted to show you an example of a really good bit of work that I had last year for a very similar topic. So what this person did was, was take all the key information, and put it into a nicely presented poster. They don't have to be the greatest artist in the world. It's just about taking care about your presentation and making sure that you use the information well. Okay guys, we're now going to time how long it takes for this tennis ball to hit the ground using this stopwatch. And let's see if this is easy or not. Okay. Oh, right. Didn't even start. Let me try one more time. Whoa. So, it actually hit the ground before I even pressed the button. So that's not going to work, is it? Okay guys, by recording the video of the ball dropping on the iPad, what we can actually do is get a much more accurate reading of how long it took for the ball to hit the ground. So we can flip through the frames and count them, and that will give us the time. So let's have a look. Seven. Eight. 10. I think that's the thing now. So 10 frames. iPad video runs at 30 frames per second, so that means that this ball took 0.33 seconds to hit the ground. It's much more accurate than we could have done using our eyes and the stop box. So, the goal with our iPad usage in the classroom is to make it as seamless as possible. This will help with pupil engagement and allow us to keep our lessons having a nice sense of flow and pace. Using the iPad can also help us with our assessment for learning by giving us direct and immediate feedback on how the pupils are coping with certain topics. The last thing that we can do is once we become familiar with how the iPad works, we can be quite creative in the ways that we use it. So thank you very much for looking.